some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and Brad and I are doing our top five disappointing games of 2023. Uh, if you're not familiar, every year we do a disappointing list because not every game is amazing. And sometimes we have high expectations and they don't come to fruition. And here are those five games. Um, now to me, I probably say this every single time, to me, disappointing doesn't necessarily mean that I think these games are bad. Um, uh, they have elements of, you know, good things about them, but then it's mainly more my expectation for them was higher. And because we also do a worst of the year, they don't belong on that list. So it's kind of like a happy medium um, where it's like, hey, guys, like you're not terrible, but you're not definitely making the great list. Um, and yeah, man, we got some, we got some good ones this, this year, I think this one was actually pretty easy for me to make. Yeah. Um, mine was, was, was okay. Yeah. My top, my top three were definitely my, I mean, there was a big gap. My top three were my biggest. Okay. There's a, there's a big blank spot and then my four, five, six. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with a dishonorable mention. This is uh, so number six. Um, for me, this was a game that basically I expected. I had played this game at Gen Con, and this has happened quite a few times, where the Gen Con experience is a lot better than whenever you actually play it in a more not hyped uh, category or, right. or not hyped um, situation. Uh, and as I got this game, I felt that it was just kind of a whatever game. I didn't really like the way it was actually flowing and the, just the company that makes it, I expect more from. So my number six is Kapow. This is volume one by volume one and two, which apparently this, this was a game that was made earlier. Yes. But so this might be kind of a reprint from uh, now wise wizard games. Um, so this is a dice customizable game where you have your your character's abilities over on the side. Then you have a generic uh, grid of attack, defense um, and then special other sp unique stuff. And you take your dice and you roll them behind your screen. Yeah, immediate, and then power-ups and after power-up stuff. Uh, and the faces on the dice allow you to do various actions. Uh, initially, whenever I had played this, I kind of... I think I, I had demoed this at Gen Con, and this was probably around the time where, you know, dice... I was really into dice throwing and stuff. But... As it turns out, I don't really like 1v1 games that rely entirely upon luck. And this game has that in spades. You want to do an attack, well, you need to roll attack symbols. You want to defend, you need to roll defense symbols. Um, I mean, I did like that each hero, you know, their whatever made up hero, had unique ways that they played. But at the end of the day, you're not really using those a whole lot, and you need to still use your generic uh, stuff. So it's just kind of like, oh, okay, well... Oh, and all this is done behind screens, by the way. Um, so when you're rolling behind screens and you're setting the dice, you're like, boy, I really hope they defend. Um, or they, Or I really hope they don't defend. I really hope that so I have this big attack coming and uh, they got all the defense and there's no way I could have known that. Uh, it just kind of felt like there's a better way to go about this. I mean, hell, Dice Throne is, I would say, is a better way to go about this with the, just the Yahtzee style rolling dice without interacting except with cards. This doesn't have any of that. So ultimately... I got rid of it. Didn't like the randomness of the dice on top of the the dice customizing. I just didn't care about when you're like if that's like the major gimmick, and it went on a little bit too long for it to uh, matter. Like for it to if it was quicker then maybe, but it wasn't really all that quick. So yeah, 
that's my dishonorable mention kapow volume one and two yeah this one just never really enthused me a whole lot so that's why i never even tried it yeah and i think the fake superhero thing just doesn't really do it for me i was also kind of superhero fatigued mm -hmm. with this uh well dice throne had marvel dice throne but um what was that other one? Sentinels. Sentinels, yeah. Yeah. It's like what like I mean, what 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 are you gonna make? What kind of superhero are you gonna make that's not from a named person that you you couldn't pay for the IP for? Right. Yep. So yeah. Oh right. number six. Well, my number six is a game that I went into because it looks cool on the table. And I went into okay. it expecting it to be a cool cooperative game. Um and it just kind of fell blah. I mean, and and it's I don't even really know how well known this game is. It's actually from Smirk and Dagger Games. Uh, okay. So they've done their, you know, several things in the past, but this one was kind of one that just didn't work for me that well. And it's Tesseract. Interesting. I don't know anything about this. Um, this one is, oh man. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and flip to the game picture because it's kind of hard to explain unless you see. So there's a big oh, that does look cube. cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's like a bunch of dice that make up this cube and you are working together to try to remove dice from that and get them placed in the containment area with matching symbols and colors. Um, and you, if you do that, you win. So the containment is this. But if you have if this hunter ends up going to spot number seven, you lose. Okay. Um, and it's it's just weird. Like I like you see that you see like the hand holding up the tesseract thing, and it's really neat looking. But then it's just like the actions you're taking and your the dice you're pulling off, and it it just it just didn't work well, you know. And we played it with four players. And let me see. It says it's best with two to three. So maybe the maybe the bigger player count did stuff. But you're going to remove cubes and place them on their in their labs, depending on their because uh, this is your player deal. So you're going to take a okay. cube from your lab, and in order to move it, you've got to do. Um, let's see. It was put three of them in a row. I'm just trying to remember. I don't know. This, this game it just fell flat. I. Yeah, th this was one of those ones that it, the 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 coolness factor of looking at it outdid the gameplay. Yeah, um, I haven't really heard a whole lot of people enjoying this game either. <laughs> so, so I don't know, but it, it was one that um, I actually played this at the Christmas thing because it was one of those Secret Santa gifts that one of the guys got, and and okay. it just, and it just kind of. Just didn't work for me. Smirk and Dagger has been kind of one of those companies that... Uh, it's Smirk and Laughter now? <laughs> well, no, it's both. They, <laughs> oh, they okay. have party games, it's the Smirk and Laughter, but their Smirk oh, I see. and Dagger is their ones that they still do with... Um, uh, shit, they're... You know, like their old cool stuff that... that oh, like Cutthroat Caverns have. and... Yes, Cutthroat Caverns. Like, stuff like that's always what I picture from them. Yeah. Um and yeah, they're an odd company. They are in you know, so I I really don't know much what, what else much to say about this. I mean it the, it looks cool on the table. Yeah. But the gameplay falls flat. You know, okay. it's just kind of a one of those things. Yeah, not even close to my radar. Like I have no idea what this is. It wouldn't have been so, mine if I hadn't played it that at that Christmas party. I mean Yeah. You know. It just wasn't a good one. Sure. Okay. Which that sounds like it's like the perfect uh, scenery to play a game like this at a Christmas party. You know, if it's from Smirk and Laughter. It's right. Like, well, no one was laughing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> All right. My number five. And this one is such a shame, too, because I actually finished this campaign. And to be fair to this game specifically... Don't do that. Do not binge. I feel like if I had paced this game out over some time, I probably would have different feelings towards it. But I binged it to play it, and 
man, it just got extremely repetitive, almost to a point where there it felt like there was a meta. So my number five is The Legacy of You uh, by Garfield Games and Shem Phillips and a solo only resettable campaign. So I was like, dude, this sounds like a slam dunk. Right. Like, um, I mean, Garfield Games, I love most of their games. Uh, but man, so yeah, like I said, this is solo only with a loose story of, um, it seemed to be, yeah, this, this, uh, aqueduct or this river crafting guy. I don't even know if it was based on any history. It, it might have been, or I think it was inspired by. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, going through the trials and tribulations of creating this, um, God, hold on, I'll have to look it up so I'm not just butchering exactly um, what it was about. Um, yeah, plagued by floods, eager to put an end to the devastation, Yao selected Gun to devise a plan. After nine years of failed attempts, Gun's employment came to question. After his passing, you inherited his father's work, a series of canals to direct the, yeah, and to nearby fields and waterways. That's the entire game. And the action and gameplay of it is fine. Like, there's multiple ways you can lose. Like, you can be overrun by barbarians, which is basically going to constantly be happening. Over the course of the game, you're going to have less and less people to pull into your deck and more barbarians to deal with. Um, you kind of will be going through the same canals, so you can lose if that river wooden piece catches up to your boat and a few other ways. But your cards have multi-use, which is cool. You can either you can you know discard them for their brown ability, like the card on the left and the hand. You can get two food. You can trash him, like put him in the top discard pile for an extra food, so three food total. Um, and you're going to be using your workers like you do in all of Shem's games. The problem that I ended up having with this was again when you're playing through and the story is very, very minor and you have to win, you have to win more games than you lose. So it's like, Hey, after this many games, you know, depending on how many you won, this is kind of your ending. You can have a really good ending, really bad ending, things like that. Is eventually this game came down to an efficiency puzzle, which I'm not the biggest fan of. Like I'm all about being efficient in games, but whenever you have to be super efficient where no mistakes are allowed, that's where it kind of starts to become very tedious for me. And that's exactly what this game came around. Like whenever I found something that worked, I never deviated from that. And it worked almost every single time. So like, yeah, it's a small footprint, it's a resettable campaign. Although I don't know why you would want to reset it um, to redo. Um, it helps. This one I could. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. So I, I mean, if people were to be, say that they liked it, I, it, that totally makes sense. Um, hence why it's on the higher end of, of this list. But by the end of the, you know, after I was done with it, I was so done with it. Um, yeah. And it's, this, um, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I, go ahead. I, I was just going to say this one is one that uh, I haven't played enough to really have an opinion on yet. Um, yeah. Only played like, Two of the little, the first two little things of the campaign, yeah. just kind of left it at that. So, it's right to be determined for me. Yeah, because so. I feel like if I had played like a game, maybe a week or something, mm -hmm. then I'd I'd like that efficiency kind of thing and be like, oh, okay, yeah, what's the new, you know, new cards that are being added? Um, the barbarians ramp, I think, way quicker than I feel like they should, and sometimes that deck. Like it could be completely stacked against you. It is entirely possible for you to set up this game and lose, um, and that I don't like. Uh, which I mean, the easy fix is you just reshuffle and just start over. You didn't have to play, but it's annoying to kind of be like, well, I lost, and technically I played, so I have to do the lose condition right. and progress forward. It's just. I mean, or you play one card and then it's like, okay, what's the next barbarian? Okay, I cannot beat that. I cannot deal with that at all. So it's just going to cause me to lose way more resources. And now I definitely can't win. It it, it just kind of became a little bit much after playing it over and over. Um, 
but other than that, I mean, I really like the art. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's one of the it's one of the rare um, uh, Garfield games that didn't use um, the the Miko. the Miko stuff. This is the same artist I think that did the Raiders of Scythia. I think they used the same yeah, guy with this one. I think so. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I mean, definitely give it a, a shot if you want. If you love efficiency puzzles, solo only, uh, this one just kind of got really annoying towards the end. So that's my number five. My number five is a game that looks really cool on the table. And the concept. <laughs> it's Tesseract again. No, no, no. Uh, the, concept of this, <laughs> the concept of this game is really cool sounding. Um, and it was one that uh, I ended up picking up because my wife thought it looked, looked cool and everything. And it ended up being kind of just not living up to the expectations. I mean, that's why it's a five and not down lower because it's not a bad game inherently, but I had my expectations high enough for it because of the whole rolling meeple um, aspect. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, it just kind of was weird and that's rolling heights. Yeah. Um, so oh, art by Quan Chai Moria. See, we talked about him earlier. Um, did we? <laughs> I already forgot. Yeah, he was the guy that did the art. Oh, one yeah, yep. But um, but uh, John Declare, you know, this was a kind of a a different type of game for him because you mm-hmm. usually he's more of the whole card crafting, you know, all the stuff with cards. This game is a city city building game, and you the the gimmick that got people in with this is that you're rolling meeples and the meeples that are um, standing when you roll them, you get to do actions with them and stuff. Um, And the ones that are on their side, you know, that don't aren't standing up, they don't do anything for you. So (laughs) you would think that, You'd be able, roll, rolling meeple standing up. I mean, some people think that's easy. Some people think it's hard. I mean, it just depends on what happens. But the randomness of that aspect. Um, well, it was, wasn't it? Because it's been a bit. I think if they're standing, you got their full effect. If they were on their side, you got like a half effect. But if they were flat, well, they did they did nothing. Because I feel like I remember there was like a worker that'd be like, you get two points if it's standing. You get one point if he's on the side. I don't. Well, this thing says standing meeples work hard that day and provide special actions and building materials while face down meeples provide nothing. Yeah, I think maybe face down they meant um, like if they're actually flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like you got a full effect if they were officially standing up. It's it's the randomness of that. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, maybe it's, it's, I'm trying to math it out in my head, like, dice you you know what you need to get you know like yeah. and these it's like meeples and you're rolling them to try to stand you know i don't know it's it was just weird i thought it was going to be a yeah. cool gimmick for it the game in itself looks pretty cool when you're getting the city building and you're getting the skyscrapers built and stuff like that um so i actually found this game to be super fiddly Yes. Because those tiles are so tiny and they want those stacks of like 15 fucking blue cubes like next to each other. It's like like yeah. the amount of times my friend accidentally knocked things over mm-hmm. was I mean, it was comical. So like because I was like every time, but it's super annoying. Yes. Uh, yeah, it looks cool, but it's like you almost need those. um with that, with that like old that game that old people play where you like push the disc across like the oh yeah yeah shuffleboard you know like yeah. shuffleboard thing like the sticks so you can just never mm-hmm. actually touch it but just from a distance you can place those stacks of of cubes um yeah. so yeah ultimately that's kind of the thing i mean it, it the idea was there and rolling the meeples was its unique thing you know no other game does that to my knowledge 
and it just kind of i don't know just didn't work for me yeah that much no i agree was this on my is this on my list it's not it's not on my list but um no but yeah that's a good one that's a really good one but okay number five. nice my number four uh originally wasn't going to be on this list i actually had it as one of the best of the year and then we kept playing and then i took a break and then we went back and i was excited to play it again i was like oh cool i can't wait to see what happens and after the first scenario i was immediately over it but we kept playing and then we called it as a series because mm -hmm. it got too too just it just has too many things against it than it has going for it. But I can't put it at worst because it does have things going for it. So my number four is Kinfire Chronicles. Knights Fall. Now, the way I'm probably going to talk about this game makes it seem like I hate it. Um, but it has all the issues I have with this game are immediately fixable. But the one thing I'm going to talk about is I like... I like the world. I like the characters. Um, I like the storytelling. I think that they definitely have something here. And for some reason, every single time I post a video, they comment and they're super nice. So I can't really dog on them too much. It's like, uh, but we'll see what they say whenever they see our hour long discussion. Um, and as far as I can tell, this is this company's first game, so they can definitely improve. But Kinfire kind of suffers from a lot of like wanting to have your cake and eat it too they want it to be very minimalistic but they want the aspect of a campaign of unlocking stuff but the problem is all the upgrades that you get for your characters are just super it's just more and more cards so you have this is okay i was like why, why does this look weird this is on i think yeah, I think so. yeah. um but you have one of the things is like you get these random um, packs that you get to unlock of bronze, silver, and gold. And I kid you not, every time you open those, it's not exciting. It's like, oh, more cards, more shit. Put it in the, you know, the backpack because nothing ever feels like, hey, this is for me. Like they really want you to deck construct ahead of time. Um, but if you're just wanting to play the game, it kind of just becomes more stuff. And you're like, well, why would I put this card in whenever everything that I already have is working? Um, imagine if we were playing Gloomhaven. You know how you have to have a certain number of cards in your deck for Gloomhaven? Mm -hmm. And when you level up, you know, five scenarios later, it's like an excruciating, like, oh, shit, what do I want to put in? This sounds really cool, but what am I going to take out? Th now, imagine if in Gloomhaven, you unlock stuff every game like every single time and eventually it just becomes meaningless so that was one thing the biggest thing that this game has against it is it has an initiative chit bag of the players and the enemy so the enemy has actions on it that right. are like certain numbers are associated to a certain action it is entirely possible and has happened that the players can never go because every chip you draw is the enemy. It's also entirely possible for the, the enemy to never go. So it's completely random and unbalanced and it's not exciting. Like, it's not like, Oh shit, what's it going to be like? Cause in, in, um, Aeon's end, you know, that random initiative deck mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, like, uh, like let's hope we go because we can do some stuff. But if the enemy goes, we can do with we can deal with it. But you know you're gonna get to go eventually. Kinfire does not have that balance. It has that just chit bag where it's like, okay, enemy's going again, and you lose every scenario if one person goes down. That's so it's like it's it's so random, and it's like if it was short and it wasn't a campaign thing, whatever. It's unique. I'm not against the chit idea, but to have it to where it, like I like one scenario, like they have these condition cards where like they go into your hand and it's like, oh, whenever um you have to get rid of these, you take a damage. 
one scenario we were in, I got a bunch of hurt cards in my hand and then we lost. And it's like, okay. And it has a fail forward system where it's like you get to keep going. You don't have to restart the scenario. But it just it's so aggravating that and because of that, you can never strategize because you never know who's going. So you're like, well, like after like three or four scenarios, I drew my hand of cards and set them aside because it's like, what the fuck is the point? I can't look at my hand and see what and you tell me what you have. And we can be like, okay, if you go, we'll do this. If I go, we'll do this because you just don't know you like I played this at three. Um, like let's say you were playing a full four player game, completely possible that two people never get to play. It's like, oh, all my chits were drawn, all that player's chits were drawn. You guys having fun? It it just had it's so frustrating. But I like the story, I like the world, the city actions um can be fun and intriguing, but all they need to do, and I hope they take my discussion to like to heart. If they want the chit idea, make two bags. Make an enemy bag and a hero bag and have separate hero and enemy turns. Because if the heroes get to go, you still know you're going to get to go, but you don't know who's going to get to go. And then when the enemy's turn goes, you still know it's going to do something, but you don't know quite what. So you have imperfect information versus none at all. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, so that's uh, <laughs> those are the two major negatives for this game. Um, like I said, if they were to come out with another chronicle, like I mean, it's called Kinfire, like another like campaign thing, and they made some major tweaks where it's not just here's a bunch of shit thrown at you and randomness, then I think they got something here. I think that they have a very minimalistic, cool world here. Um. But those things just, those suck. They suck so bad. So that's my number four, Kinfire Chronicles. All right. Well, my number four is a game that I went into blindly. And I, because I had heard some people talk decent about it. And it ended up turning into a variation of a system of a game I don't like. It's It, it has a pandemic factor. Um, and then it also has superheroes on top of it. So, and, you know, we talked about this before the, the Marvel fatigue kind of yeah. stuff. Um, so ultimately this one just kind of did not work for me. And that is Marvel dagger. Oh, okay. Um, I went in this game thinking it was going to be its own thing. Um, I, you know, obviously not really looking into it a whole lot. Come to find out, it's a more convoluted pandemic clone. Um, okay. But even with more randomness, because there's die rolling. Oh. <laughs> to, to but finish. you like the die rolling pandemic game. Well, but this is... This has a... I mean, you're going to location to location. You're rolling dice to try to... <laughs> do a successful successful attack or mission attempt so okay. it 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 almost kind of is a cross between the pandemic and like a let's say a defenders of the realm you know like where you're rolling dice a few different stuff but if you play this game with three or four players it's gonna take three hours oh god <laughs> it's a long ass <laughs> game and i just like I said, not going into it expecting a pandemic kind of thing and then having the randomness of the dice and then having uh, it takes Surprise. so we damn got a pandemic. long. It's yeah. so long. And oh, it even kind of looks like pandemic. I know. That's what I'm saying. It, because it, the cover does not, because I I just, it wasn't my game. I played somebody else's. They were like, hey, you yeah. want to play Marvel Dagger? I looked at the cover. I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? It's Marvel yeah. game. I'll, I'll give it a shot. And then we set it up. And I was like, this kind of looks like Pandemic. <laughs> and then we start playing it. I'm like, you, wait yes. a minute. You look at the box. You peel off Marvel Dagger. And it's Pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then it uses eight-sided dice. And, and you're rolling those to try to accomplish different things, whether it's attacks or or mission completion. And 
the one thing I can say in its benefit is there's there's 20 heroes. Um, oh, okay. That you get to use. They're double sided though. So like, you know, there's 10 hero cards, but they're double sided. So you won't oh. be able to use, you know, the, the both of them on okay. card, obviously. But it's just that there's just too much luck. And there's even a threat yeah. level. I mean, it's just like, it's just like, I mean, it, it, it pretty much is the pandemic thing. You know, and yeah, kind of like the epidemic level or whatever they call it in pandemic outbreak, I, I think outbreak level. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, this one was just one of those. It was my fault for not looking into it more before I played it, because if I would have seen what it was going to be like, I wouldn't even have played it. And then it wouldn't be on this list. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, just and and I think the biggest killer, if this was a 60 to 90 minute game, I could probably live with it. Because sure. it does have some different aspects, but when it's a three freaking hour game, that's just bonkers. <laughs> and and you know, so yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much why it's here. Okay, yep. <laughs> it's not the worst uh, game in the world. I mean, I can tell, you know, like it, it's it's one of those. It's not a bad game inherently. I mean, if you like Pandemic and you don't mind longer games, you're gonna be okay with this. You know. But I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I mean, I think I remember seeing this, but I was like, I don't care. Yeah, again, it, was one of those, it was one of those fantasy flight games that they just like announced. Hey, you can pre-order Marvel Dagger. <laughs> it's our next awesome in- installment of our Marvel series. And then... like, Shut up, where's more Marvel champions? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. That's my number All four, right. Marvel Dagger. Cool, cool, cool. My number three is uh, is a game I'm not sure you actually have played. Um, it has an IP that I think is fantastic, and this, out of this designer's repertoire of games, of the three games of his I've played, it is his best one. But at the same time, every game of his I've played, it's like he just has weird decisions in it and this one i think is kind of one of a a good example of just kickstarter bloat there's just a bunch of stuff to it that i don't think really adds a whole lot to the game um and i think i man what did i what did i give it hold on let me let me look it up i think they're actually going on to game found for another content thing yeah i mean i gave it a seven so it's like it has good elements but ultimately i was expecting more uh, so my number three is Witcher: The Old World. So this uh, is a theme that is, I mean, fantastic. The Witcher IP is is awesome, and this is actually set hundreds of years, I think, before the Geralt and all that. So what is most popular? This has nothing to do with it. It's just tons of different Witchers going out monster hunting, and I will say I got lucky from this because. The original enemies that you would have to go fight were the most like not not generic, but how you would fight them, like what you would like regular enemies you'd have to deal with, as well as like the big trophies you're going after. There was no discerning difference from one another. But whenever I played it, we played with the expansion that actually makes the the trophy monsters, you know, dynamic and actually more right. exciting. So uh which, unfortunately, if you don't have that, then all the enemies are just going to be the same and fucking stupid. But, like, if you fought a Leshen, it would act a different like a Leshen. And if you fought, like, a Fiend, it would do things like that. But in The Witcher, um, I mean, you pick a school that you're going to be in. I find the school traits to be relatively similar. Yeah, they have, like, a special power, but they're... I mean, they're they're not that exciting. Like, I never feel like I'm a, a part of the bear school or part of the cat school. Like, it's just kind of like, yeah, I'm I'm a witcher. But the fact that this is competitive is also odd because you can you're trying to get a certain number of trophies, and you have to kill a monster to get the final trophy. But you can get a trophy by defeating another witcher. You can get a trophy by yeah, killing a you know killing a monster that you have to kind of move around the board to uh 
get potential tokens. You don't have to, but if you get those, that helps you with um fighting it. Mm -hmm. Um the thing about this game that I kind of like to your Marvel Dagger point is this game is long and it's always long. Um and ultimately unless you're gonna go out of your way to fight another player, you have no reason to have a full player count. You have no reason to have any of that because it's like you're doing your own thing, which it makes sense thematically. Um and it is kind of a small deck builder, but eventually you have to you always have to start getting rid of cards, but you always have to buy cards and the cards are kind of multi-use. I mean they have like icons on them for your movement. So each location has like a river or a mountain or a forest and that's how you just have to discard the card that um allows you to travel to that but they do this weird kind of color coding combination thing where instead of matching icons to one another like tainted grail does they do cards are like hey this card can be combined with uh purple red and blue so if you have that in your hand then you can get combos off but you're not really deck building. It's just kind of there. You can only use a certain number of potions in combat. It's just like weirdly restrictive when it doesn't need to be. Money's super tight uh, unless you go gamble. Um, but if you also don't have any money, then you're kind of hosed uh, until you can get some. So just weird, weird decisions that kind of made me never want to like kind of touch this game again um i mean the minis are awesome the production is good uh it does evoke the witcher but what they also did which was kind of stupid as well is the event cards are they have different types different decks of events but they don't matter like it it doesn't matter where where you're drawing them from so it's not like you can only draw city events when you're in the city. You can just be drawn and it's just like, okay, which do you want to draw from? Because I remember first time playing this, I was like, does it matter? And he's like, no. <laughs> it's like, why? <laughs> like, why would you have a city event deck and a, and a wilderness event deck, but then not delineate between the two? I am I think you just need to stop backing this company's games. <laughs> it's the dude. Because it's the guy. The, the Hala you didn't like, Titans you didn't like, this you didn't like. Um now I did back the one that just ended with the Witcher. Half of Destiny, Half of Destiny is that what it's called? Because it's it's the current Witcher. So it has like you're all mm, Yennefer and all those guys in it. Okay. And it's like a card driven um type deal. So I did go all in on that one because it looks really cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, this yeah, one, go on. I, I stayed away from this one because I saw the word competitive and I didn't, it just seemed weird to me. So I was like, I didn't care yep. for it. Yep. Go on board as a publishing type. And Lucas Vosnack is the um, designer. Uh, yeah. Valhalla was whatever, and Titans was glorified risk. Mm -hmm. Also weird. Because none of his games are, like, horrible. Right. But it's just kind of like, why did why did, did no one playtest this? Did no one give him any feedback that this is just kind of a little wonky? Um, how did he get this IP anyway? <laughs> I don't know. But... Well, I'll tell you how he got the IPs, because... This this company and that Lucas, they're Polish. Oh um, yeah, that's right. That's where this is originated from the Witcher story. Yeah. Is. So. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it it is kind of like it, it works for sure, and like the decisions that they have in it aren't like game breaking, but they're just kind of what's standing um away from me being like i actually want this in my collection too right i'm fine never playing it again yep uh so yeah that's my number three the witcher old world all right so my number three is a game that was kickstarted several years ago um and it kept getting pushed back and kept getting pushed back and kept getting pushed back and it finally was delivered this year 
Oh shit. I had, nice. I actually was going to be backing it and I I decided not to. A friend of mine backed it. Um and I'm glad I didn't because it just didn't work for me. For all the time that they had it, they could have been doing better stuff with it. And that is Oh. <laughs> This was on my anticipated list for two or three years in a yeah. row. Yep, same. Um, and I saw Antoine ba- Bauza being a person with it. You know, I was like, you know, this it's gonna be pretty sweet. You got I always saw the pictures of like the the walled terrain, mm-hmm. you know, like the walled tiles and all that. Ultimately, there's nothing special about this game, in my opinion. There's, it's it's just another dungeon crawl with little gimmicks thrown in, and I think that's why it fell off right here. Um, it just has the Egyptian theme is really is really yeah. it. Um, because that it, looks cool. It, yeah, it looks cool, but it's overly done. You don't have. I mean, the walls and those whatever the I think I can't remember what they call those things, like the little temple-y looking. Oh, like the doors. Things. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They just it. It ultimately there was nothing unique about this game other than just the look. The game was just very basic. Um, you, you're just it's a campaign based game, so you're yep. going through and doing all that junk. Um, and it just ultimately just didn't work. I mean. It brings in the Egyptian stuff. I mean, you're going through and you're you're pyramid diving, watching for traps, you know, this and that, fighting certain little monsters and crap like that. But but uh, I heard there, like basically, your actions were just super generic. Like yeah, you just move. Yeah, you, you get search. like I, you only have like two actions on your turn. Yeah. It, and and yeah, it's just pretty basic. I mean, that's that's the thing with I. I'm assuming what took so damn long for this to deliver was the component shit, like the, the you know, like I mean, because I the game itself, I mean, I don't see how <laughs> they were done designing it in an afternoon. <laughs> well, I mean, and you know, and with having Antoine Bauza on it, I I was expecting something a little you know, more. And I don't know mm. if like they, they, they were just trying to overproduce the component quality to make it unique in its own right. But I mean, it just, I don't know. It, it, it was just one of those weird things. I, I was looking forward to this so much because I like the whole ancient Egypt stuff and yeah and all that. But ultimately it was just basic. I mean, your yeah. combat and everything is just, just basic. I mean, it's just your basic dungeon diver and you know uh, yeah and it feels like when when this was slated to come out 2021 i think gosh i can't remember what the project was but um yeah i ended up selling my pledge to someone so good job uh right so i i guess i got lucky um and the the weight and the bg i mean take it for what it's worth but the weight on bgg is a 1.93 I mean, Which, I mean, to be fair, some people need there are, do need to be lighter dungeon crawls. No, I agree, but um, but it doesn't yeah, mean, it's uh, they added to the cost because of the having the stupid walled tiles and crap. It's like, yeah, if you're gonna do a game like this, don't worry about that. Just put tiles out and play. It would have been mm-hmm. cheaper. You could, you know, and all that stuff. It would probably got. You don't. You don't. You don't need those. Right. Um, like I'm trying to find on their page whenever it ended but i oh uh nope that's the last updated hmm i don't i don't know when it ended i can't find it on their page but i feel like this was like this would have probably done a lot better if it came out three years ago oh at least yeah um games have changed so much since then so yeah um Let's see. Four years ago, it was at Gen Con in preview. Okay. So, because so. I mean, even the game I just talked about, Kinfire, uh, at least it has some different ideas that you can take that for what it's worth. Here, it's like, all right, gonna move. 
And apparently it doesn't have that much replayability either. Well, they're, right, what. exactly. It's super, super. Yeah. Basic. I mean, yeah. And, and yeah, so, yeah, it, it, it kick-started. The Kickstarter project ended four years ago. Is what okay. I, is, and, and for, I, now, a game like, you know, I waited three and a half years or three years for my Shadows of Brimstone stuff. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of damn content, a lot of minis, and a lot of stuff. Like, right. I just don't understand why this one took that long to. to I mean, put I'm up. still no, waiting I on. I know Dawn pandemic, madness, so. <laughs> so maybe pandemic slowed it down too. I, who knows? Yeah, yeah, I'm still waiting on certain games that. I mean, it could just be smaller team, but at least it delivered. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah. I, this one was one that I was like, man, like, okay, because I expected it to never ship. <laughs> like, yeah. So I sold my pledge and I was like, good luck, man. Um, but it, it, they actually fulfilled. And I was like, oh, man, like, because like, the Egypt theme, that's never done anywhere. Right. Uh, but then as I started seeing reviews, I was like, yep. good. I'm, yep. good. I'm glad exactly. I missed it out on that. So <laughs> fascinating. Okay. My number two. <sighs> This one is equally disappointing, hence why it's on this list. Because again, I don't think this game is bad. I actually think it's better than the other one that is on in this new trilogy that they're making. But I gotta say, I'm really thinking this company and designer needs to kind of reel it back a little bit because this one just did not do it for me. Um, And so my number two is... Mm. scholars of the south tigris this south tigris tigris series not doing it for me anymore i initially thought wayfarers was good and then i replayed it and i'm like i just feel aimless ever in both of these games i just feel like i have no sense of direction this one does a little bit better actually wayfarers is kind of like all right start picking shit uh scholars at least gives you some semblance of um kind of a direction and it is a cool idea where you are translating um different manuscripts uh from you know different types of languages to be able to fulfill objectives um i'll go to the picture because i'll be curious if it's if yes okay if you're colorblind i'm fucking sorry (laughs) because (laughs) like yeah, the colors have different icons, but man, there are other elements that don't have icons. I bet you this is a disaster to play if you are any type of colorblind. Um, but essentially, what you're doing is you have action cards in your hand that you're placing on your player board uh, to do various bonuses. So not only do you have different colored workers that are not different from one another, uh, you have different colored dice, and you have... Um. yeah that was pretty much it different color workers different color dice uh and then you have the different colors and and they did like a uh a color spectrum wheel to delineate um like combinations of colors because it's like you have your primary colors and you have your secondary colors and to do other actions you have to combine those colors uh so, like, if you wanted to do an orange action, you would need to do an action that uh, was, like, also red and yellow to be able to get this orange action. It's interesting design, like, stuff you I haven't seen in any game before, but, man, is this game kind of just a mess. Like, so you get these, you get these workers down at the very bottom. Those are your, not workers, um, they're, like, your translators. So you have, like, a little... Uh, wooden piece on that to show that that one's yours and it can translate you know Greek into Hebrew and then you eventually need to make a uh, a path from certain uh, languages to get to the one that everyone's trying to get it to and I want to say it's uh, Arabic but um, I could be wrong there Uh and so sometimes you have to place workers or pay resources on multiple people to eventually get the correct path to get it to be able to be translated. Therefore, you can fulfill it and get the get the benefits for that. The other thing with this game 
is you have this weird area control section over on the those buildings, the purple, orange, and green buildings. And it's in over on the far right. Yeah, those. Those are objectives that you can take to try and fulfill. Um or not take. You could you can place them on there to try and fulfill them to get victory points. But also you get benefits if you have the most of those tokens on those roofs. This game is just like get off get off the drugs and reel it back <laughs> like it's like because viscounts and paladins i mean there's stuff going on but it feels self-contained this one just feels way too muddy to get any semblance of like a concept of what is happening right. um and wayfarers is is even worse like if there was like if people could kind of pick a kickoff point, then I would have liked the concept of Wayfarers a lot more. But just the way that the mechanisms are done in both of these games and this one just never quite feels fluid like it does in the West Kingdom series. Even though Architects isn't one of my favorite of that, I like it a lot better than these two. Um, and then just the translating thing just kind of gets old. After a while, because uh, the people that you can hire up at the very top, those can be put down and they could be new translators. Eventually, translators will retire. You tuck them under your board for a benefit because um, you need. Oh, and also, by the way, you're drawing dice that you roll um, from a bag. So you have a randomness of what you're drawing from a bag. So it's just like, <laughs> like, OK, what if we had a game about translating and then <laughs> Oh, and then there's a color wheel, and it's like, whoa, Shem, like, geez, dude, what are you, are you okay? And then, like, you know who I've always hated? The colorblind. <laughs> Let's make all the colors in the world in this game. It's like, are we still talking about translating? Yes, and then we'll throw in workers. They'll be colored, too. It's yeah. like, okay, all right. Uh, well, the, well, dude we like puts to... out, the dude puts out a new game every year, so it's, yeah. eventually he just needs to take his time a little bit more i think and it feels like yeah. that with this one or like let it cook a little bit play test it a little bit more just to be like ah this doesn't need to be here this feels like a little much can we simple like simplify it down um it i don't know i'm i'm obviously in the minority here again i have this at well i don't know what i have this one at anymore uh scholars Yeah, I mean, I have it at a, at a seven, and Wayfarers um, of the South Tigris. Yeah, I have it at, at a six, but West King, like West Kingdom, uh, Paladins, and yeah, Paladins is a nine. Viscounts is also a nine. So that's kind of why, with both those games being so high, highly rated for me. I'm kind of like, oh, he they can't do any wrong. And then the South Tigris series is kind of falling flat. Don't give a shit about the third one. And then yeah. his other games that are like King Nezareth or just his other uh, themes that I've been seeing around. I'm just like, eh. eh. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> so that's my number two, Scholars of the South Tigris. All right. My number two is a game that was probably of the games on this list was my most anticipated, like my highest, you know, excited to play. Um, and it falls at number two on this because it's a long game and the randomness is huge in this game. So those two don't mix when <laughs> that is true. A long game with randomness. I love the, the theme and I would still play this game, even though it's disappointing. It's just every time I play, I've played this game three times. And every time I've played it, because we played it with three or four, one person just is having a horrible time. And to me, that just makes it not, you know, and that is distilled. Yep, this was my number seven. Really? Yeah. Yep. Um, and it, for the same reasons, I'm assuming. Were you was it the randomness for you probably? 
Uh, yeah, and it just, I now to be fair, I've only played it once. Um, really like the theme. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, the fact that you succeed or fail through shuffling your deck is stupid. <laughs> it's well, so stupid. Well, yeah, and because you need certain components, like you, you know, to make certain alcohols. Mm -hmm. And if you can't find that one component and you're just sitting there, you know, and stuff coming up and it's not that, it's like, dude, you're just screwed. Yeah. You know, and, and stuff. So, yeah, it's. But, yeah, that's that's the main reason. I mean, it's a long game when you're playing yeah, with three or four true. people and then having that randomness and, and then add in the fact, like I just said a second ago, where every time I've played this, there's been one person not having fun mm -hmm. because of that randomness. Yeah, because it had some weird element uh, where you had to, like, you had to add, oh, God, what was it? It was you either had to burn the top cards of, like, like the film of, of like, your deck mm -hmm. or whatever it was supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. Or you had to add cards. I can't remember which one it was, but, like, you basically had to do something weird with your deck uh, before you could even start processing. And it's, like, obviously, I'm not a spirit maker. Right. Um but I go to quite a few distilleries where there are people who are, and it's a very meticulous process that this game, for some reason, just wanted to be like, yeah, actually, sorry, you just didn't get, you didn't get it. You put it, you, you wanted, you aged it, and then it's like, all right, hopefully you made it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just. I also wasn't as enamored with this game as I thought that I would as, uh, thought that I would be. Yeah, I was pumped for it. Like I, I was like, okay, this would be awesome. It, you know, the right. art was cool. You know, I, I thought it was going to be a really sweet game. And like I said, it's not inherently a bad game. You know, that's no. why. But it's just having that those two things, that randomness and the length of play, just do not are not a good mm -hmm. combination. Yeah, I mean, this is a theme that I think would kill in like a Vila Lazard or worker placement style, right. like yeah. almost like a Kanban kind of like where it's auto manufacturing, but now it's about spirit making. Mm -hmm. That like that theme I'd go for, like because I like the aging concept, like how you had to have certain things and like a better casket, uh, and you can you know hedge your bets and then have it age longer to get more victory points. Um, but yeah, it felt like there was just a few too much market stuff of items and caskets and, and glassware and all that. So that was just a bunch of just stuff coming out. Uh, I did like the clipboard element Yes. of like what you can build or build, <laughs> what you could brew and and make that that was uh, variable. Um. And I also like that it had a different, a bunch of different types of spirits from all over the world and different workers and stuff. So it, it has good elements here, but I agree with you. I think the length and the randomness of shuffling your deck to draw and hope you distilled correctly. It's like that is so against like sometimes you play a game and it's like, well, that doesn't really like Sky Team, for example. That does. Why can't the co-pilot and pilot talk to each other? Well, we wanted to make a game. Okay, <laughs> fair. But here it's like, well, you made a decision that seemed to go completely against your theme that it's... doesn't quite work. Yep. So, yeah. Because I remember playing it. Uh, I never did a review for this because I didn't get it played uh, past the first time. Um, but we had the same issues with the shuffling of the, of the mm -hmm. ingredients and the drawing. And it's like, oh, sorry, you failed. Yeah. So, and I didn't really, I was like, I think again, this is another seven, which I know to a bunch of people is um, trash. Oh, no, I gave it a six. Sorry. Yeah. So, which is slightly above average in on my ranking scale. Uh, seven is um, kind of like in the good category, but it just depends. Like this one, I felt nothing. <laughs> right. Yep, so that's my number two. Then we'll 
you know, there's an expansion, I think, coming and talked about for it. So I don't know what that'll do, but we'll see. Yeah, who knows? Maybe we I mean, won't. If it goes on kick. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. If it goes on Kickstarter, I'll at least give it a give it a look. <laughs> give it the old gander. Yeah. All right. My number one. And I'm very curious if it's your number one or if it's on another list. Uh, this was very easily going to be my disappointed because I very much love the game that this is based on. Mm -hmm. The world that it is in um, is absolutely outstanding in terms of its artwork. Mm -hmm. uh, but boy, this game could not be the more mid than I have ever seen. Uh, I think what hurts it the most is calling it a sequel. Uh, yep, I think we have the same. I think we have the same thing. <laughs> we might. My number one is boom. <laughs> That's my number one too. Is it okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably for so, different reasons. But um, well, so I actually tried the solo variant for this too. Um, the calling it a sequel to Scythe is the most cash grab thing and he just for some reason never understands what to put on his fucking box don't say tapestry a civilization game because it's not that don't say expeditions a sequel to scythe because it's not that <laughs> they're not related in any way except artwork um the way this game plays is so whatever like i, I like the people who are kind of like talking about this game i'm like have you played like literally anything else? Cause this game is so bare bones. I don't find this game all that interesting. In fact, this is, I mean, since it's number one on disappointing, it's inching closer to worse, but it functions and it has some neat ideas. The multi-use cards of the, you know, depending on where you want to put them around your board for its resources or for its special power or for its like mul multiplicative effect, meteor stuff. That can be cool. The mechs, when they're like, I, because I had the metal ones are fucking badass in design. The art is stellar. But man, I just find this game so boring. Yes. So, why is it your number one? Well, I mean, that for that reason, too. Like, say I went into this because I'm not a scythe person, I don't like yeah. scythe anyway. So, that wasn't going to be a reason it was disappointed i i went in expecting you know a scythe kind of thing but what disappointed me was knowing what i know about scythe to having the weird supernatural angle in mm -hmm. this seemed weird um and then of course yeah. like i said i only i didn't play anything but the base game of scythe so i don't know if supernatural stuff starts creeping in on that last the the campaign final expansion for scythe or what i don't but, think it did well, right i i and i have no clue but but the supernatural stuff kind of took me out of it on this plus the randomness of the tiles you know because you mm -hmm. they're being face down and having to um i know you can you have to move eventually but like you can block places for people um yeah. the tableau building is fine but yeah um being able to spam locations too you can just kind of go bounce around and go back and do those powerful abilities if you happen to be where you're at yeah. and get lucky or one last to tile that has whatever you need on it that last one i can't remember what yeah the there's like a tile that like if you clear it off you get one of your stars to put down and it's yeah. like man where is that and someone could just find it and you're like oh hey thanks and then you can have the resources to go clear it um i also really hated the fact that placing stars down was an action was a tile you had to go look for mm -hmm. to yes. drop them instead of them just automate it's like wow why, why extend this game any longer um yeah, I mean, the card use is interesting. I don't think you need to tuck it around your board, but this game is this game is weirdly a table hog as well mm -hmm. that I find kind of annoying. Even though I have a table that can fit any game I want to play, it's like this game doesn't justify it being a table hog as it is. Uh, the 
player or the solo variant was again whatever you just had two mechs that would kind of loop around certain sections of the map and that was kind of it yeah i i really don't find anything about this game particularly exciting yeah um and i'm actually all for the supernatural thing kind of being thrown in i think that's a nice twist but again it's just not done in any way this would that would have worked much better in scythe when you have the encounter cards that at least you get some depiction of a story and your options are related to what you're seeing this doesn't have any of that and so it was, yeah it was just very meh <laughs> yeah yeah this is as yeah. meh of a game as i've played all all year of kind of a and to add insult to injury scythe was my favorite game um for years uh, and to call it a sequel, it's like, oh shit, what's it going to add? Nothing gameplay related to Scythe, <laughs> except you place stars when you complete objectives. Yep. Um, yeah, this this is the one game, out of all the games that we've talked about, this is the one that blows my mind that people say they really like. I know. And I think like, it's... Scholars, I'm yeah. like, I get it. Like, I can see why that would work for you um witcher kinfire legacy maybe not kapow but that was more of a dishonorable mention all of those if they were like that was my favorite game of the year i'd be like okay <laughs> <laughs> but here like they're like oh it's so fucking good and then they'll like try to explain it you you can play cards to, to the side of your board it's like is that wow you move your mech it's probably yeah. the, pe the people spent the money on the Ironclad edition and they just don't want it to be bad since they... <laughs> I guess, really but even the Ironclad edition wasn't all that expensive. <laughs> you know that there's probably going to be expansions to this, too. Yeah. But, yeah, that that one was uh, an obvious duh to be number one. Yep. That was my first one I put on the list. Same. Same. All right. Well... That is our top five disappointing games of 2023. Let us know what games were disappointing for you in the comments below, and let us know what you think of these games also in the comments. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching, and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon, and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.